Welcome to All About Business with Mark Tolbert. It is so exciting to come into your homes, your businesses, to talk about entrepreneurialism, to talk about business, and, you know, just to help people understand that getting into your own business, taking that idea, taking that hobby and expanding it is not impossible, but you have to pursue it, and you've got to take the first step, the journey of a thousand miles, begins with the first step. I am so excited today to have James Anderson with us with James Lemonade. Welcome. Thank you. How are you? I'm fine, sir. I tell you what, I have been drinking James Lemonade, it seems like forever. It is the best lemonade on the market. Thank you. How did you come up with that recipe? It was a family recipe. My mother made the product off and on but it's changed since you have to have it bottled but from the original recipe she it was from my parents okay yeah and and so now you didn't your family didn't start this business you actually uh became a cosmetologist is that right yes i'm a cosmetologist uh out of uh, kansas city kansas that's where i first started my okay. entrepreneurial and, and how long did you do that 25 years really yes Man, you don't look much over 25, 30 years old right now. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. So, so you were, you actually did, so if, if you did that for 25 years, that means you were back in the jury curly. Yes. <laughs> yes, I had one. <laughs> so, so, how did you get from cosmetology to lemonade? Well, I opened up my own salon. I used to work with a uh, good friend of mine, Bert Grigsby, taught me everything I knew about hairstyling. Uh -huh. And I jumped out on my own and opened up my own salon. And cleaning up my shop one day, I noticed uh, a big storage wrappers all over my floor. And uh, okay. I believed I could do that. And it started with just hamburgers and french fries and okay. fried chicken. So so you had the, the beauty salon. Correct. And how many chairs did you have? I have a four-chair salon. still have it. Four-chair okay. salon. Mm -hmm. And so you notice all these food wrappers and stuff, and you said, why not have food right next to the barbershop? So you opened the restaurant? So I acquired that property right next door. Mm -hmm. So, you, you know, from the entrepreneurial standpoint, you were in... A hair business, a food business and hair business, I mean, that's like two different ends of the spectrums. What went through your mind as an entrepreneur to say, I can do this? I mean, what, what were some of the obstacles that you had to, had to cross, you know, to get into another completely different business? A leap of faith. <laughs> a leap of faith. But I believed... I could do hamburgers and french fries. I mean, just simply as that. I can do hamburgers and french fries. And I believe that I wanted to keep the clients there so they didn't okay. have to leave uh -huh. and had it already really available. Okay. And the lemonade, my uh, beverage supplier, increased the price of his product so high, I just put everybody out and said, you, this restaurant would just have lemonade for lunch, the whole menu, lunch, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Uh -huh. <laughs> Isn't it amazing? how sometimes we aren't even looking for something as entrepreneurs, but we find a need mm. and then feel that need and it parlays into something else. Hey man, the, the, the niche was right there. I mean, it was, it was not, no restaurants in the neighborhood. It was uh -huh. opportunity okay. to pursue food. So, so how long did you keep, well, you still, the restaurant's still there. Right? Yes, the restaurant is still there. But how long had you been in the salon before you did the restaurant piece? Five years. Okay. Five years. I worked there five years and acquired the, the capital to convert it. But I started in that place cutting hair okay. and moved next door to the house. Uh, yeah. That yeah, is incredible. <laughs> so now, here you are. You are a cosmetologist. Mm -hmm. Cosmetologist. What is it? Cosmetologist. <laughs> <laughs> and you're a restaurateur. Correct. And this lemonade over in your restaurant is selling like 90 going on. Yes, it is. So what, I mean, how long did you ponder, maybe I could bottle this stuff and sell it before you actually did? Well, it was my barbers. That was like, James, this is good enough to bottle. And I would hear that, 
And so I wanted to pursue it. I wanted to step out and see if it could be possibly done. Uh -huh. And when I presented it, it took a gallon to a, one, a chemist. <laughs> I still had a gallon and a cup of sugar. Yeah. <laughs> and he liked it, but he wanted to know it was something different about yours, and you're not telling me. And it was. It was mint. I put just a pinch of mint. You were supposed to tell that. Right? Oh, I don't <laughs> mind. It's on, it's on, it's, it's on, the, it's on the ingredients. You have to have that on. But, but, but I guess the key is knowing just how much right. to put in. I agree. I agree. Because I, I always like the uh, the, the commercial <laughs> about the dog and the beans. Yeah. You know, with, with the with the secret restaurant or the secret recipe. Right. <laughs> so, so your lemonade product was so different and so good. Even the people around you started saying that that they thought of it before you did. They did. My barber, a uh, good friend of mine, Derek Jones, he's been with me from inception of that business. Yeah. And uh, he was just encouraging me to step out, step out, check it out. That's yeah. I used to deliver in between haircuts to appointments. I said my appointments <laughs> to get <laughs> it out there. But that's an entrepreneur. <laughs> See, and that's what, I, that's what I tell people all the time. If you're a true entrepreneur, you burn both ends of the candles mm -hmm. and the one in between. And you make it happen. I, I had a lady ask me a question in a seminar not too long ago. She says, how do I balance family and church and children and this and that? I asked her, I said, how long do you sleep? She <laughs> said, about seven hours. I said, you sleep too much. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> so, so now, <laughs> you, you, took the rest, you took the recipe and all that to a chemist. So what happened from there? I met a distributor, a local distributor, Belfani, okay. and uh, I waited outside. He would never taste my product. I just I saw I waited outside and called him at the right time and the right moment, and he tried it, and he started ordering my product immediately from right you, there. You don't mean outside his office. You mean outside, 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 outside. <laughs> <laughs> like James, James. Okay, I tried, and I had it ice cold and prepared, uh -huh. and he tried it, and he ordered my product immediately and canceled the other products and brought me in just like that. Exactly. Or right. my first tractor load. <laughs> See, here's what I'm trying to tell you, folks, is that here's a man with a product, he believed in his product, but he didn't go home and say, man, they won't give me an appointment. Because no. they wouldn't give me an appointment. Correct. And, and you had left product with him before and he wouldn't taste it? Wouldn't taste it at all. So you waited out, you stalked the man. <laughs> <laughs> politely. politely. Politely, but you know, that, that's the thing, is that when you're an entrepreneur, you try everything. If I got to climb up the side of the building, if I got to dig a hole and go under the fence, <laughs> I, I mean, you got to try what you got to try yeah. to pursue your, your destiny. I, I, this is an exciting story. I'm going to write a book. <laughs> <laughs> so now, so he tasted your product. Yes. And and he, he took your product and started distributing it in the stores where they sell milk and all that stuff. Right. Okay. In the school district at that particular time. They were selling my product in the Kansas City, Missouri school district. And it was a perfect fit. He, he had to go deliver milk with or without my product. So Absolutely. Was, my man should be right on board. <laughs> that is fantastic. So now that was, what, about five years ago? Yes, okay. five years ago. So now, uh, and of course, here's what entrepreneurs have to understand about business is that when you get a success, it don't stop there. Just the beginning. Just the beginning. It's, Talk a little bit about it. Well, what I mean by just the beginning, I really didn't know about the beverage industry. I knew about the hair industry, but not the beverage industry. So I had to educate myself. And it's continuous to this day. At least read. I got this from Les Brown, at least read 17 pages of something right. every day. Okay. And it really helped me out a lot, educating myself about the beverages yeah. industry. So now, Belfonte gets your product in, and then, of course, you couldn't depend upon them solely. But did that help some other people to say, oh, if Belfonte took it, then let us try it. Well, Bill Fonny was very good to me. After okay. Once we got a relationship, we established a relationship, he was very good to me because he introduced me to a local convenience store that was powerful that took me all across the United States.